I want to welcome all of you and those on the webcast to Brookings. I am really looking forward to today's topic and to hearing from all the speakers we have assembled. Uh, the subject today is the digitalization of the American workforce, or hashtag digital skills. And this is important because this topic is at the heart of our program at Brookings uh, agenda over the next couple of years. We want to help cities radically adapt to the disruption in today's economy so they can create more opportunities for more people. And the urgency to adapt is great. Digitalization is upending today and tomorrow's opportunity structure. It is transforming industries, changing the mix of jobs created, shifting the demand for skills, and redistributing, redistributing where tech growth occurs in the nation. And amid all this churn, not all people or all communities are gaining. And racial disparities remain stark at a time when our nation will be more multi-ethnic and multiracial, not less. Now, Christopher Mims of the Wall Street Journal recently published a column uh, where he cited the wisdom of Melvin Gransberg, a uh, uh, professor of history of technology at Georgia Institute of Tech. And Kranzberg um, offered this insight. Technology is ne neither good nor bad, nor is it neutral. In other words, the impact of technology depends on context. But I want to emphasize the latter part of that principle, nor is it neutral. That, to me, is the inflection point we are in today. If it's not neutral, then what is it? Well, digital technologies and the way we deploy them ought to reflect our values. It must be a force for good. It must create more opportunities than it destroys. It must lift up the hopes and aspirations of more children, of more families, more communities across the nation. And that is why I like this new report put together by the stellar Brookings team of Mark Miro, Sifan Liu, Jacob Witten, and Sid Kulkarni. Rather than simply sound alarms about the coming technologies, it shows how the increasing digital content of occupations and industries can improve the productivity of some firms and can improve wages for low and mid-skill workers if, if we can help them get on the ramp, on ramp to the right jobs to the middle class. So we can do more to ensure that rapid digitalization is opportunity enhancing. And that is the purpose of the panel discussion we're going to provide today. We are going to hear from some nonprofit and some private sector leaders on their efforts to help workers, both new entrants to the labor force and incumbent workers, reskill and adapt to this digital moment. And that conversation will be ably moderated by Steve Levine of Axios. In short, I think we simply need more intentional efforts to make this digital age the opportunity age. And without further ado, I am now going to hand our program over to a great friend and scholar, Mark Miro. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. Thank you, Amy. Uh, thank you all for joining us. And uh, uh, thank you all of, the, all of you out uh, in the uh, Twitter sphere and online. Uh, where, given the trend that we're discussing, there's a huge, uh, a huge audience out there as well. So I'm Mark Miro, uh, senior fellow uh, at Brookings. I have a simple question to help us get started uh, this afternoon. Let's all just ask ourselves: How is the presence of nearly 200 million, uh, uh, 200, yeah, hundreds of millions of computers in America's offices, stores, hospitals? Uh, and garages changing the world of work. 
I'm asking this because I think that we're scrambling, frankly, uh, to adapt to a dramatic transformation that we don't fully understand, even though we're in the middle of it. Uh, uh, digitalization is changing everything, as various controversies about big tech, big tech suggest, but that is especially true in, in the uh, labor market. And yet I think for all of the hype, for all of the reflection on these issues, we still aren't really coming to grips with even the basic uh, trends around us, and we need to. So what I, I want to do is uh, highlight some brand new work from Brookings uh, on how digital technologies are changing the talent equation. We're especially interested in the, the uh, uh, the labor market. So along these lines, I'm going to uh, say some things about what digitalization is and why it matters, walk you through a few big big picture trends that I think will set up the conversation, and then we're going to focus briefly on what this means for the education and workforce development needed to give more people a leg up amid these trends. So uh, let's start with what digitalization is and why it matters. Basically, Digitalization is the pervasive application of software and IT to every field to transform business operations and add value. So it's a very general, large uh, enabling power. Why does trend, uh, the trend matter so much? It matters hugely because digital technology is special. It's not just one technology among many. It is what it's economists call a platform technology and enabling technology. Digital technology has special power because its core capabilities, the collection, storage, management, exchange, and use of information amplify the ability of workers and firms to add value. In this regard, uh, uh, the explosion of digital tools is transforming nearly every industry. On the tech Technology side, mobile networks, apps, cloud computing, artificial intelligence are enabling the scale up of a plethora of digitally enabled business models, ranging from ubiquitous e-commerce to the gig economy to industry 4.0, uh, virtual to real manufacturing to e-health and all of its in, uh, incredibly exploding uh, uh, new uh, forms. And, and now artificial intelligence is available as a service. Uh, it's becoming ubiquitous. It's not an owned activity. It's an online service made available to all companies and will be. As to the workplace, it's being remade too. Cloud-based enterprise management platforms like Salesforce are ubiquitous, loved and hated by all. Uh, social collaboration tools like Slack and Skype are ubiquitous. Online matching platforms shape the entire world around us and the rise of the platform economy in general uh, is this. So in, in, a, in this regard, a period of rapid technology change is creating a lot of flux in the economy. On the positive side, significant opportunities for individuals, firms, industries are there for the taking, and I'm going to touch on a couple of those, because digital empowers. That is an absolute fact. On the more concerning side, two distinct types of challenge are stressing the labor market. At the higher end, the nation is struggling with actual shortages of IT and computer workers. The BLS says the nation is going to need 100,000 new IT workers every year in the next decade, but is only producing 60,000. So there's a, a deficit there. At the middle and lower end, far too few workers possess basic online skills. It's hard to believe this, but the OECD recently reported that nearly one quarter of Americans, and these are not solely uh, uh, older Americans, many of them are young Americans, either don't know how to use a computer or can do little more than do email on one. Uh, without doubt, these are big questions to look at here. So let's look at our new analysis and what we're finding. Uh, Nationally, uh, nationally, and here I want to uh, give again a shout out to Sifan Liu uh, and Jacob Whitson on my team who've worked so hard with me on this. So basically what we've done is use a very granular Department of Labor data set based on thousands of interviews with workers, direct interviews, this isn't modeling or anything like that, to rate the digital content of some 540 occupations from one to 100. 
to give you a feel, uh, software developers, you can see, come out top of the list with a score of 94. Registered nurses, uh, about 55, so that's a middle uh, digital activity. And then construction workers come in at 17. It's interesting that it's 17 rather than one or zero. Uh, so it, everything is digital. In short, uh, the, you know, the, so then once we've done this, we've for an easier analysis sorted the occupations into high, medium, and low, where high might include writing a program to scan a computer disk for viruses. Uh, 33 to 60 is medium and might include using basic office productivity software uh, regularly in one's job. Below 33 is low digital demands, low or no digital skill. Uh, so we've built up a pretty novel uh, file of task-based data on the changing nature of work based on what people actually do, or at least say they actually do. So I think that is an advantage of this kind of work. What have we found? Well, the first thing uh, to say is that the share of jobs, uh, that, that well, the digitalization is proceeding really fast. Looking in aggregate nationally at all jobs, the share of jobs with high or medium level digital content has increased rapidly since 2002. Um, in 2002, just 45% of jobs required high or medium digital skills. Now 71% do. That means just 29% of jobs are now accessible for someone with low or no digital skills. So, the jobs accessible to those with few skills are dwindling. The, the access points are moving upwards. And here's uh, another look at how, what this looks like. Here you can see how selected occupations have been moving uh, rapidly up the digital scale between 2002 and 2016. Nothing stays the same. Everything has elevated and moved upward. Customer service representatives, that big yellow ball uh, in the middle, because it's a big, uh, a big uh, occupation, went from 25 to 61 in the last. So this is a middle class accessible job, but it now requires, you know, now a substantial uh, 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 digital uh, uh, readiness. And you can see that in general the biggest changes are occurring across the bottom and middle uh, of the occupational distribution, nursing, dental assistance, sales, retail occupations. Again, those are racing upwards too. So while we've been captivated by the high end, and we have a lot to say about that, we think we have major training challenges at the top of uh, the scale, a lot has been going, a lot has been happening below, below it, uh, and we need to think about that too. So. Uh, this is all important because digital technologies, as many scholars have suggested for now quite a while, have tremendous capacity to both empower the workforce and divide it. Uh, this flows from the power of digital technologies to augment productivity, what I was saying earlier, uh, augment the productivity of those possessing higher order creative skills and to substitute for the work of those doing rote work. Um, in any event, you could see here that Digital skills being, bring big benefits to the workers that have them, namely through increased wages. Uh, here you can see that highly digital jobs pay more than twice what low digital positions do in annual wages. And, it, and an important addition here, higher digital jobs do correlate with somewhat greater resilience in the face of automation, uh, something our panel's uh, no doubt going to talk about a bit. So, Lots of reasons to acquire as many digital skills as one can, as early as one can. In like fashion, the more highly digital an industry is, the more, product, pro, uh, more productive it likely is, and the better it likely pays. Here you can see that, tech adopting industries to the top. Uh, you can see the higher scores to the top uh, uh, are clearly performing uh, better on this measure. Tech, uh, uh, they, they tend to pay better. There are other measures of productivity that show them performing better. Uh, so you can see at the top, uh, you know, uh, professional scientific technical services, fi finance and insurance, media, Steve, uh, management and companies and enterprises, all doing well, performing better, and are populated by people with higher digital skills. Metamune is likely up at the top there. So uh, again, uh, 
this is, this is a, a tremendous indication of the power of these technologies to transform not only people's lives, but the course of uh, firms and industries. Uh, and yet, uh, just as digitalization empowers some workers, industries, and places, it also seems to polarize outcomes. This has been a persistent finding over the last couple, uh, uh, a decade or so. Um, for one thing, the uneven distribution of digital skills inevitably translates into disparate participation in the best paying industries that we've been talking about, which exacerbates economic disparities. Here you can see just the skill variation across uh, groups, uh, Asian, uh, white, black, and Latino. Women with slightly higher median uh, preparation, but we're gonna see, you know, I think that, I think when we go into certain industries, that is, uh, they're, they're, that is subject to particular fields. But you could see that uh, the know-how is not evenly distributed. Uh, you know, women are a special case uh, here. Uh, their higher mean digital scores and historical orientation to health and helping work has yielded significant overrepresentation. This is probably good uh, for them in the in the middle of the. Uh, uh, in decent paying middle skill occupations and industries, but they're underrepresented in certain, uh, uh, you know, harder science uh, uh, in, uh, uh, fields uh, that we've been hearing about a lot in the news. Um, like, likewise, you can see here the underrepresentation of black and Latino workers in the most highly uh, uh, digital uh, industries. Black workers have managed a toehold in middle. Uh, uh, skill uh, health uh, areas, but uh, but are are underrepresented in, in at the top. And meanwhile, Latinos heavily overrepresented represented in the lowest digital jobs: uh, agriculture, buildings and grounds maintenance, construction. So again, digital digital skill turns out to be a quite revealing uh, uh, way to as assess uh, the fortunes and, and prospects of groups. Um, uh, what's more, the same tendency of digital skills to empower and divide is playing out across space. And I'm going to say that I think that this is one of the uh, kind of secret histories or secret drivers of some of the spatial uh, 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 challenges we're facing in the country. Uh, uh, right now. The thing I want to say here, though, is that digitalization is happening, happening everywhere in space, but not evenly. And that, too, has to do with the inherent nature of digital uh, economies. Metro areas, uh, in this respect, you can see very in, uh, substantially on the degree of their overall digitalization. Uh, the presence of critical high digital jobs and workers, which is the measure here, you know, those in that upper echelon, the share of workers, uh, ranges from 38% in San Jose to 15% in Stockton, and is in the 20s in places like Columbus, Philly, St. Louis, Nashville. Uh, so there's a, a, uh, there is a, a substantial variation across places. Washington ranks number two with 31% of its workers highly digital, and here too, uh, the digitalization trend may be helping to increase the divergence of cities' economic well-being. We've talked about this in the, in the, in the context of the BA, uh, BA attainment is the main driver. But I think there's increasing evidence that technical skills uh, are uh, particularly accentuate these uh, dynamics. So you can see here a uh, scatter plot uh, looking at the largest hundred Metro's high digital shares mapped against their average wages, you get the drift. Uh, the Metro's with the highest shares of highly digital workers to the right, San Jose, uh, Washington, D.C., Seattle, for instance, uh, are the ones with the highest mean annual wages. And by contrast, places with low digital skills like Las Vegas or Stockton, California, deliver annual wage levels way, way lower. Um, don't want to be deterministic here, but this is a strong correlation, strong evidence statistically about this. Nor is this all. Highly technical workers are concentrating in the most digital metros. 
That is, the higher a, pl a place a share of highly uh, digital workers, the more the share is increasing. So in that sense, the digital rich are getting richer. There is a pull away uh, going on uh, among the most digitally, uh, 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 most digitally endowed places. So this all adds, I think, for an incentive for regions too, cities, to get serious about their digital skills uh, uh, pools. The bottom line here, differences in technology adoption are playing a very big role in shaping outcomes for people, industries, and regions. Likewise, the economic inclusion and success that, uh, that all places hope for, all people hope for, now depends heavily on digital participation. So, uh, where, where does this leave us? Uh, these are a few of the trends. Uh, you could dig into this much more uh, online on, on our website. We have full data available for all, all places and, and uh, for all of these uh, occupations. But let's just, let's just talk about how this touches down here in greater uh, Washington as a way to begin to set up our panel and, how to, and a conversation about thinking about how business, educators, and the workforce development organization should respond. Um, well, to start with, here's the region's digital dashboard. You can see this is a highly digital metro, as I was saying, second highest share of highly digital workers among large metros. 656,000 high, highly digital jobs, 31% of the workforce. Only 28% of the region's jobs are no or low uh, digital. If you dig in a bit deeply, more deeply, you can see that the region faces, I think, two fairly distinct digital skills issues. Towards the upper right, um, you can see a group of bubbles reflecting some of the highly digital occupations that groups like the uh, Greater Washington Partnership are highlighting as a critical issue here. The growing occupations are projected to generate tens of thousands of job openings in the next decade, but see that they have quite high uh, digital scores. And so this is a growth area in, in, the, country, in, in the country, but in, in many cities and especially uh, in ours. At the same time, uh, lower down, uh, lower, uh, a bit lower to, to the left, uh, you can see bubbles reflecting the region's opportunity jobs, critical on-ramp jobs that pay above average wages to those without a bachelor's degree. We've developed a measure of this inspired by one of my colleagues, uh, uh, Chad Shearer, uh, to get a handle on this other space. Uh, with often middle-tier digital scores, these occupations ranging from radiology technicians and RNs to office and salespeople to office administrators present a different challenge. Uh, they're they're upskilling so fast that less less educated or marginalized workers are having uh, trouble keeping up. So there's a real uh, so we have two distinct issues in this space, uh, and I think we've largely talked about only one. Uh, of the issues historically. So I think our hope is to try to broaden this discussion, which you can see. Now let, let's just talk about the, the, the catch-up issue. You can see this here. Dozens of, the met of Metro's most important on-ramp jobs here are seeing very fast uh, 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 digitalization. Uh, the blue bars are their scores in 20 2002. Orange is in 2016. You can see physical therapist assistance more than doubled from 20 to 44. Uh, RNs, 38 to 55. Dental lab technicians, 10 to 35. These are bedrock jobs of you know, middle class uh, aspiration. And you can see that uh, they, they are simply demanding more. So our data, you know, I think, raised two main digital skill challenges for DC and most regions. They ask, how can the region expand its high-skill uh, IT talent pipeline to support more growth and diversity in its high-end health, defense, and tech industries, for instance? But then secondly, how can the area help its lower-skilled workers catch up and hook on to the region's increasingly digital on-ramp jobs with the sense that participating in a digital environment is a route to middle-class success? So. 
I um, mean, these issues pertain, I think, to most metros. So we've tried to work out, you know, a rough uh, outline of, of some of the kinds of uh, strategies that matter. Uh, uh, on the one hand, this digital IT talent pipeline agenda. On the other hand, that of basic digital connection, especially for underrepresented groups. In terms of the IT professional pipeline, I think it's coming into focus. Again, we as a society, and I think this, this region has begun to think about this uh, pretty thoroughly. I think this is about employers working more closely with universities and community colleges to develop aligned, relevant, professional degree programs. Um, it's about scaling up non-traditional accelerated learning uh, models, uh, whether it be competency-based learning through apprenticeships or the boot camps and code skills that have innovated and captured people's imaginations. And I do think a radically improved IT pipeline is likely uh, going to require some form of universal K-12 computer science exposure and, and instruction. Uh, Virginia's moving on this. Maryland and D.C., not so much. I think this is an important uh, thing for the region to think about. Across all this agenda, there's solid work going on in the region as defense and health companies partner in deep ways with institutions like University of Maryland or UMBC to create degree programs, mentorship opportunities, whether in cybersecurity or health analytics or logistics. So we need much more of this with a stronger focus on including underrepresented populations, but I think we've begun the work on this direction. Turning to the broader inclusion challenge, I would say this has received less attention and is becoming an imperative as well. Companies, doctor, uh, educators, nonprofits need to develop unprecedented initiatives, I think, that mount super relevant, compelling exposure campaigns in schools and the media, really scale up hands-on experiences in modern, with modern office tools as a matter of course in high schools, and then heavily expand the kind of entry-level tech training Elizabeth Lindsay's Bite Back organization, which we'll be hearing about, uh, provide to allow underrepresented uh, populations to go into, say, computer support or network technician roles. She'll tell us more about this. I almost think to hear that the best thing the region can do would be to get every teenager exposed to Salesforce, Lord, Lord forbid, or SAP or Microsoft Office, simply as an initial connection to a, a, a skill that matters much more than maybe we think. That is one of the skills that is differentiating uh, uh, people's experiences. Which brings me to my last uh, point. In the end, we really need to succeed, to really succeed in ensuring that workers here can flourish in the next decades. We will uh, uh, need with, to get more, uh, to, to make sure that they get along with more digital help, digital skills, uh, more a sense of helping, of, of an ability to do what the machines can't do. Uh, human traits are going to matter much more now because the era of astronomical computational speed means human, humans must focus on what we are that computers aren't. And so I, do, I just want to say that while we do much more to teach digital skills, we need to get better at cultivating inherently human ones too. Uh, adapt, adaptability, curiosity, social intelligence, teamwork, creativity, and entrepreneurship. Um, rote won't make it now. So it's got to be a collaboration between digitally empowered, uh, uh, digital, digital, digital machines and digitally empowered workers who know how to work with the machines. So it's becoming clear that the greatest education needs may not actually just be the mastery of more and different computer skills, so that matter is going to be important. The work ahead is going to be a much more about getting better at managing change and finding new ways to add value. So uh, that's enough. I think I've laid out a broad platform for a conversation now. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, I'm looking forward to the discussion, which is going to be moderated starting right now by Steve Levine of Axios. He will introduce our people. Oh, thank you.